Welcome back to Sports Edge. Bob Diaco joins us, UConn's football coach. You, we really appreciate you coming here. You got a lot going on these days. The spring game coming up tomorrow. It's great to come and, and represent the Huskies and come talk about you know Husky football. So it's just awesome. So how is spring practice going? Your 15th and final one is Saturday. Yes. Are you happy? Where are we at? Very happy. It's been a great, great spring. It's been a great winter conditioning. It's been a great spring. There's not one player, and this isn't coach speak. There's not one player that hasn't improved. And I mean, I can pinpoint every single guy. Um, we call it, you know, uh, it, it's perfect because uh, right on the heels of the national champion, the women's national championship, uh, Coach REM is 10th and, and uh, you know, whatever, however many in a row. Um, we had our and one plan. So to kind of go with that basketball theme, yep. each player had one thing to improve on this spring. Okay. But, At least one thing and, and one. Oh, oh definitely. But yeah. this, we, we detailed out every single player. And, and picked one thing that after the 15 practices that, that they just absolutely had to be better at. We call it the and one plan. I think we should wake up every morning with the and one plan. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I got a long list. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about last year because mm -hmm. you come in, this is your, your head coaching debut. Let's face it, it was a trying year last year. Oh, absolutely. And, 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 it, was a, but, and it was a necessary year. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, didn't, we didn't cut any corners. We didn't shortchange any, any areas. Um, we didn't try to make a quick fix or mm -hmm. appease something here or there. It was completely done the right way. And like you said, it was a trying year. It was a trying year. It was a yeah. trying year for everyone. And how about adjusting to things? You talked about, I remember you saying, dealing with the players' lives. You're, you're like Every player's life as a head coach is something yeah. it's kind of overwhelming. But, but even dealing with, you know, maniacs in the media and all this other <laughs> fans. Oh, just administrative duties, you know, I mean, right? all yeah. that. No, I mean, it, 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 was a, it was a learning experience for me. Um, a learning experience for our staff um, as we came together as a new staff for the first time. Um, uh, uh, you know, kind of a year of, not a year of conflict, but, you know, player to player, coach to coach, coach to player and, and back. That whole dynamic just takes some time to yeah. build trust and love and respect, uh, which we've built and we built it the right way. And we were consistent in our messaging and our DNA and we're kind of, you know, we've, we, we now have a foundation and a language. You know, we have built a language and a culture so we can communicate. I've had similar conversations with, uh, you know, the people who preceded you at, at UConn, and that is this part of the country hasn't seen big-time football, like you're accustomed, right, where you played, places that you've coached, instilling that tradition of that big-time football, the, the guys coming in on Thursday to start, right, you know, uh, you know, Parking their RVs, right, right. And RVs and getting, getting ready for the big Saturday. People in this part of the country don't know that, and so you've got a lot of fans who come aboard and then and then quickly step off. Your job, and right, you've you've kind of been given this task of you got to keep these people around because this program's got to be built slowly over time, but to to keep people really involved. Yeah, that's that's the that's the challenge. It's a little bit outside my control. Yeah. Um, in terms of timeline, you know, we're going to do it the right way, and we're going to become a champion. Uh, no one in our organization, no one on our team has any doubt about that. Um, and those results are going to change sooner than later now. Um, we've got a foundation built. As it relates to the fans, they've been great. They've been great. And I was here when the team was rolling. I was here as a visitor. Yeah. And the place was packed. And there were RVs there. And yeah. the food smelled yeah. great. Yeah. And everybody was, was rocking and rolling. That yeah. stadium was packed and it was loud. Yeah. So there's already a precedent for it. I mean... It's been proven. It's been done. The team, yep. the team has tradition. It has pride. It has winning. It has championship mentality. It just cycled back, and, and we're cycling it back the other way. It's trending up. All that being said, coming from Notre Dame, you could walk into any recruit's living room and say, hey, I'm a Notre Dame. Fans ask us all the time, how is Coach Diaco going to get the best players to Connecticut to come? How hard of a sell is that? I mean, you have a great school to sell. I'm an alum. I get all that. But... To walk into a recruit's living room, what's the thing you have to sell? Yeah, no, and, it, and it's, a great, it's a great question, but it's also not, it's not true what you're saying. Um, Notre Dame is recruiting against the teams that Notre Dame's recruiting yep. against. They're recruiting against Alabama, they're recruiting against yep. USC, they're recruiting against Texas. And it isn't walk into a living room and you've got instant um, alignment. There's a, there's a whole bunch of people that they're recruiting that have no interest in going there. There's a whole bunch of people that already know they want to go there. Yeah. It's about finding the right fit for the university. And there's players 
everywhere that can play. The, there's so much parity now. Um, you can go online and find an appropriate practice schedule. You can go online and find a nutritional plan to be big, fast, and strong. You can find a strength and conditioning plan to be big, fast, and strong. You can go to uh, fine tune your skill at camps and combines and clinics and private teachers. I mean, the resources are everywhere. So there's a lot of players. There's a lot of players. It's finding the right fit. Uh, and, and UConn's fit is a great sell. It's a great sell. And how many millions and millions and millions of people are right here? From Boston to, yep. to Buffalo, on down through New York and New Jersey, you can capture D.C. and Baltimore, and you're at home. UConn has uh, a lot of players playing in the NFL now. Absolutely. Come, have you been able to align yourself with those guys to help you in we're the recruiting? We're trying, yeah. yeah, we're trying. We're trying hard. That's a big deal for me. I want to I wanna, uh, regain a strong relationship with the former Husky football alumni. Mm -hmm. Um, and let them know they're welcome back. We're, the doors are open. You're part of our football family. That's a big part of what we're doing. And we've, 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 we've broke down that barrier for some. Some have a little bit of a barrier up. I'm not sure where that relationship kind of uh, went, went awry. But um, we're breaking them down. We're breaking those barriers down. And, and guys are coming back to the complex and, and coming to practice. And that's so big for the team. Because now you, you, you can get that bleed blue mentality, you know, and, and get that bleed blue mentality going. And when a, when a player's uh, uh, spending time with someone that wore his jersey, played the position, and excelled at it, I mean, what, what better can you get than that? That said, how are you enjoying the state? How are you I enjoying it. it? Yeah, I do. I love it. My family loves it. You're from the um, Northeast, right? You grew up in New Jersey. I am, so. but we haven't spent a lot of time here. I mean, to think, um, you, you get this great pride. Uh, and, and, and UConn is the, let's just call it the professional show in town. Yeah. You know, it's, it, 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 yep. who are you going to root for? You know, you're going to root for UConn. It is the one thing in the state that gathers the whole state's attention. Otherwise, the state is fairly provincial. You have one town that doesn't necessarily care about the other town. Everyone seems to care about and UConn that's sports. Too. Yeah. And, 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 and that's, that was a shock to me, that, that inner town, township yeah. kind of pride and rivalries, and that makes it so fun. And then they all come together to root for UConn, and, and that's an awesome thing. So that piece has been fun. And, and, and as we win, that will just grow and, and grow, and, and we'll, we'll build borders around, around the state, you know, to make sure that, our, that our, 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 our people and players stay home for all sports and to serve the university. But um, to think you can be in, in Boston, in New York City, and in, in Hartford's fun, and go to Providence, go to the beach. Yeah. You could go skiing. I mean, there's a lot of stuff yeah. to do in just a small little area. You got me pumped. Yeah. You got me you know, the go. state tourism board play? giving can you a call. <laughs> so the other thing people ask me all the time is, too, is like, okay, Coach Diaco, what's he like? I mean, we, we see you at practice. We see you at games, yeah, et cetera. Yeah. But, but we don't really know you as far as, right. like, what are your hobbies, interests? Are you a guy that was watching the Masters this afternoon? Or are you a Knicks fan, a Yankee fan, like you know a what? music that's, fan? Yeah. Who's Bob Diaco? I would say that, um, boy, that's, that's, a, that's an interesting question. <laughs> um, Maybe we should ask your Bob wife. <laughs> I would you know, I'm a, I'm a person of, of faith. Um, I'm a family guy. Um, I, I, I spend most of my days and nights on football. Yeah. And um, like most coaches. Um, but I love it. So it's not a grind. It doesn't feel like a grind because I love it. Um, the rest of my time I spend with my family um, pretty much. Um, I like to hoot and howl and at the moon a little bit from time to time, which is fun. That's good. And um, I'm a foodie. If I wasn't, uh, if I wasn't a, a coach, I've, I've always said I would have liked to have been a chef. Um, we'll have to get you on Chopped or something like yeah, that. Yeah, no, I can, I can cook now. <laughs> All right. For real, for real. So um, I love that. I love doing that when I get some time. And I love to fish. I All love to right. fish. Yeah, I love to fish. You're in the right place. Yeah, we I gotta get you on Charlie Moore's show, right? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> great. That's great. I love the Mad Fisherman. Right? Yeah, I, yep. I love that show. It's very funny. Um, but no, I love to fish and and um, spend time with my family, uh, doing all those things, and um, that's pretty much it, you know. Excellent. Terrific. Well, listen, we appreciate you coming by. The big game is tomorrow, the spring game. Yes, spring T game. Tomorrow, a, a good opportunity to go see the, see the Huskies play. Thank you for coming down. I know this is a busy time for you. And stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Sports Edge.